Hi guys, hope you're all okay. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me today. This is part one in a series of videos on the Bofeng RD5R. And I'm going to point out by saying that Radio Oddity very kindly sent me this radio to review. Um, however, the facts and opinions that I give you in this video are entirely mine. It's not going to be a biased review. Um, they've sent me this radio in return for me reviewing it and that's what I'm going to do and I'm going to be honest so like all my other videos I'm just going to be honest with my findings with this radio. So what we'll do is we'll sort of go through a quick history of the Bofeng UV5R and it's been out a few years now um, under various different names, various different guises, various different faceplates on them, different colours um, but it is the same radio inside uh, built around the Bofeng UV5R and it's really really become a popular radio and a lot of amateurs uh, turn into using radios like Bofeng radios such as myself because they are good for what you pay for them um, so they're relatively cheap you can pick up a UV5R standard UV5R for as little as sort of £18 to £22 really really cheap almost disposable and for what you pay you get exactly what you pay for you do get a functional working um, dual band transceiver and a lot of people not both in radios but I think they're great and definitely have the place within the hobby. Okay so as you can see here we've got a couple of different styles of both ends. we've got a yellow UV5RA, we've got a blue UV5RA plus, we've got the standard black UV5R and we've got the Misuta variant um, which is the UV5R and that's got the, the faceplate on the front. So these Bofangs are all, all pretty standard, all do the same thing inside. Um, they're all made at different times with slightly different hardware, but they are exactly the same radio at heart, and they function exactly the same. All easy to program, easy to use, and definitely handy for anyone's radio communications kit. So a few years down the line, Bofeng decided to introduce the Bofeng DM5R, which was uh, a flop. Um, for many reasons, uh, the fact that it was not compatible with DMR repeaters, not compatible with standard DMR, it transmitted on both time slots and was just a failure from the start really. Um, both ended a few things to try and remedy this by introducing one that was um, supposedly tier 2. I can't comment on that because I haven't tried one. But for the most part the Bofeng DM5R was a complete failure um, and when it was announced it was looking like it was going to be a big turning point for Bofeng but um, it let the side down and didn't actually um, come through. So when Radio Oddity got in touch with me asking if I wanted to review the Bofeng RD5R which was a DMR radio I was a little cautious and the first thing I said was it anything like the Bofeng DM5R and the person I was speaking to actually laughed and said it's a completely different, completely reworked radio. Um, so what do you get for your money if you purchase the RD5R? It's a dual bander so it's VHF and UHF it is true DMR compatible, so it'll talk to motor turbo systems, it'll talk to your TYTMD380 for example, it works as a normal DMR radio. It's got the UV5R general theme, so it looks exactly the same, just like a UV5R as you can see here, but they are actually worlds apart which we'll come to in a little while. Slightly more expensive than the UV5R, but around £50 at the time of filming for a dual band DMR set is an amazing price. These at the moment are around 75 US dollars um, and I'll put a link in the description to this store where you can actually purchase one from. And with it still being cheap, even though it's slightly more expensive than the UV5R, there's a disposability aspect to it. And I don't mean that in terms of you would buy one, use it and throw it away. Uh, the fact that if you were to lose this, drop it, damage it, break it, anything like that, you haven't lost a load of money compared to some of the more expensive sets. Um, you can pay you know, up to well you can pay hundreds of pounds you know towards a thousand pound for a DMR radio so when you look at it from the RD5R's point of view it's not actually an expensive price to pay for a dual band DMR radio so what we'll do now guys is I'm going to show you what's inside the box and then we'll look at programming and some of the functions of this radio okay so this is the box that the RD5R comes in the, UV, the DM5R came in a similar box which was blue and white um, so we've got slightly different packaging on this one, you can see the uh, the brand name on the top there. If we have a look inside the box, you can see we've got the radio itself there, which we'll have a look at in a sec. We've got the battery, 
Underneath we've got a programming cable. And then in this small box at the bottom we've got a standard earpiece. We've got the belt clip. We've got the charging adapter which is a three pin UK plug. We've got a wrist strap. We've got the charger base. And of course we've got the antenna. Which actually looks quite a decent antenna really. It's sort of the Nagoya style dual band antenna. So that's already a step up from the standard UV5R antenna. Okay, so the radio you can see is very similar to the UV, other UV5R models. It's got the faceplate on the front and it's branded the RD5R there. We've got a chunky battery. It's a little bit wider than the standard UV5R batteries, but it will fit um, any other Bofeng model. This is a 7.4 volt, 1800 milliamp hour lithium ion battery. And that, just the same as any other Bofeng radio, just slides onto the back and clips into place. And the antenna screws into the top like so and that is all there is setup wise for the dm5r same as any other bowfang radio you can see on the side here we've got programmable bu buttons we've got the ptt on this side we've got the speaker mic port which takes your speaker mic and programming cable on the top we've got the flashlight the volume on off knob and then of course the keypad on the front of the radio so very very standard and really in line with what you can expect from any other Bofeng UV5R. It's actually when you get inside that you see how different this radio actually is. As I'm filming this part of the video, I've already programmed the radio up and as we turn it on, you can see the display is a lot brighter than the standard UV5R and it come up with my call sign on the front. And you can already see, for those who are familiar with these radios, it's very, very different inside from your standard UV5R. You can see I've got some DMR frequencies programmed in. If we actually look at the menu, it's completely different again. We've got contacts there, we've got message, and these are all your DMR related functions. We've got call logs, settings. So if we click into there, we've got radio settings. So you can, you can manually set your squelch, your TX power, talk around, busy lock, timeout timer, vox, double weight, encryption, power save, beep, backlight, keypad lock. All these functions in here are similar to what's in the standard UV5R and it's easy to navigate around the menus just like a normal UV5R as well. We've got radio info here which has got your radio ID, device info so you can see the, the model number in there and it has a firmware number. We've got radio configuration so you receive and transmit frequencies color codes, slots, again these are analog and digital related settings, frequency step and all sorts of things in there and if we just go back through we've got zones which I'll come to when we look at programming, we've got scan and that's the menu so quite a simplified menu which works really really well. Um, there is programming software available for this radio and the cable which I'll show you a little bit further into the video but you can see Again, very different from what you can usually expect from a UV5R and very different to the old DM5R. So I think that's a massive step in the right direction. Okay, so you get an idea of what the radio looks like and what it's all about. I'm sure you'll agree it's um, a massive step away from the UV5R, but very similar to the UV5R, if that makes sense. So when we talk about DMR, what are the advantages of DMR? Um, you, for those who don't know, you hear the term, or you may hear the term DMR banded around quite a lot, but not actually know what it means, what it is. It's a digital mode of communication, so various manufacturers have different modes of digital. So ICOM has D-Star, Yesu has Fusion, um, and there's, there's a multitude of different digital modes around. And DMR has become quite popular recently with amateur radio. And there's many advantages many advantages to using DMR. So the signal quality is usually generally better on DMR. And I say that loosely. Basically, if you have a weak analog signal, you'll hear it scratchy and quite weak, whereas digital signals tend to modulate slightly better when they're weaker. And with DMR, you either hear some, someone or you don't. You'll either hear them or it'll be garbled or you won't hear them. 
so you know how well you're doing and you can use echo tests on repeaters to hear how well you're doing which I'll show you in a little while. DMR repeaters have loads of different slots, loads of different talk groups so you can usually find a lot of different conversations going on on different talk groups on one repeater so your local analog repeater will allow one net or one conversation at a time whereas your DMR repeaters will allow multiple conversations so that's another handy feature for DMR repeaters. You've got group call and private call, so you can call a group, um, it says, does what it says on the tin, or you can call somebody privately, so um, each DMR has a, its own unique ID, and you can call that ID from a radio, so if you want to chat to one person, um, then you can do that. And there's plenty of other advantages, I'm not going to go into the, into the whole big thing on DMR, um, it's out there to Google and to see, but DMR definitely has its place in amateur radio. And he's definitely, in some cases, a lot better. Um, it does have its own repeaters and it does have its own simplex channels. So DMR is definitely um, a way forward in the hobby. And I've been using it now for about two or three years and think it's, it's brilliant. So we're going to have a look at the programming software now for this radio. The software is available to download from the Radio Oddity website. I'll put a link in the description and you can have a browse through it. The good thing I like about the software is it tells you what every function is. So DMR programming can be quite daunting. And it does take a bit of practice, but once you get into it, it's it's okay. The, there's no issues with it, and the program tells you what every function is. So if you're unsure on anything, you can see what each function does when you're clicking something, what that's going to do, when you set something up, what it's going to do, and how it all works. So we'll go into the laptop now, and we'll look at the programming software. Okay, so we're in the RD5R programming software here now, and... For those who aren't familiar with DMR, you'll probably hear the term code plug used a lot. And again, it's something that can be daunting to people that aren't familiar with the mode. So what's a code plug? It's, it's basically the file that you write to your radio, like you would if you programmed any other analog radio, that contains all the frequency and setting information. And it's as simple as that. So when we say we write a code plug for DMR, we're basically putting all of our settings into a program and uploading it to the radio. So it's dead simple. The concept is actually no different to programming a normal analog radio, like you would in Chirp, for example. Um, I should mention that this radio isn't yet compatible with Chirp, um, but it does come with its own software, which is bug free and works really, really well. As I say, the link is in the description. So this is my code plug loaded into the radio here and it's actually not quite finished yet I've just been using it to test but you can see down the side um, all the different settings and it, it does look daunting but bear with me and we'll go through it so we've got basic information here which is basically the information that, that can, that's contained inside the radio so we've got the frequency range on both bands we've got the last program date we've got the model name hardware version simple as that you can just close that back off we've got menu here so I'm not going to go through all these settings but you can see at the bottom here we've got help view so if you click on something it tells you what it is so radio enable you can see there it tells you what it is and it's got some other information about the feature so it's really really simple this can be quite overwhelming but but if you click on something like Vox you can see it tells you what Vox does it allows the user to toggle voice activated transmit so I thought that was really, really good. I wish more radio software actually provided this, but you've got your basic settings here for the radio. We've got boot item there, which is basically your welcome message. You can put a password on when you power it on, and you can have it to say a picture, which is just like basically a little logo that comes up, or a character string where I've put welcome and my call sign in there. You can close these off as you go. You won't lose your settings. We've got number key assigned there. Um, this is basically assigning um, a certain key to a contact I haven't actually delved into that properly yet but it's very very simple we've got general settings here so you can see we've got the radio name the radio ID and some other settings here again I'm not going to go through all that the software tells you what every single thing um, does as you can see there we've got buttons where you can program the side key buttons which again really really straightforward I've got mine set to scan on and off a monitor and the battery indicator and the high and low power we've got text message settings here so you can send a preset text message to a user on DMR so that will only work on DMR not on analog and you can add or 
delete those as you wish like that we've got privacy settings so we've got encryption here which I haven't used but it does work and you can close that off and then we've got some of the other DMR settings here so we've got DTMF signals there we've got contacts so this is where it gets a little bit more tricky but once you learn the ropes it's like programming any DMR radio you'll quickly get into it we've got our, di our digital contacts here so we've got our talk ropes here and you can also add your own contacts in and these are all available on Google so the DMR talk groups for UK and European networks are all in here very very simple to program them in and you can see we've got talk group 9 local there we've got our RX group lists which is important for your channel so we've got the receive group list there for GB7 MR again really easy to put in we've got zones so basically these are like memory banks so I've got GB7 MR here with the talk groups in I've got DMR simplex channels there with the simplex channels loaded in and that's basically you go into a zone in the radio and you can select a channel from that zone again like any other DMR radio we've also got them for analog channels there we've got our channel lists so we've got our repeater lists our repeater channels in there we've got simplex channels we've got another repeater in there for GB7 HM and then we've got an analog channel so I'll just show you a standard digital simplex channel there you can see we're set to digital we've got the name we've got the receive frequency and the transmit frequency the squelch level power level timeout timer analog settings here blanked out because we won't be using them and then we've got the digital settings here so you can see we're on color code one we've got a contact there which is talk group nine for the simplex channels and we've got the repeater slot really really easy and then again we've got other settings here and the programming software tells you what they all do if we look at an analog channel here so for example a repeater we've got GB3PZ there very very similar we just select analog and we've got the name the squelch receive frequency transmit frequency and we've got the CTCSS in there and that's really really straightforward and you can add and delete channels up here if we look at a simplex channel so I've got PMR channel 1 in here again we've just it's exactly the same as repeater but there's no TX tone in and the transmit and receive frequencies are the same so it's really really straightforward we've got scan lists underneath and then you can program your VFOs here so I'm not going to go through programming a DMR code plug because as I say guys it is quite time consuming but once you get into the swing of it it's, it's, it's good and it's quick and I got this one done in about an hour so that's basically the programming software as I say very simple to use all the settings were explained which I thought was, was brilliant and the software is completely bug free like any other radio once you've got your programming information you just click on right at the top there and it'll write to the radio with the supplied programming cable no problems at all okay guys so really straightforward there on the programming side of things for those who are familiar with DMR you'll see it's an absolute doddle for those who aren't familiar with programming DMR radios you'd have to learn the same stuff with any radio whether it was a TYT MB380 or any other DMR radio so um, as I say once you learn how to program DMR radios it, it just becomes second nature like you would with an analog radio okay so we've got something programmed in what we'll do now is we'll have a quick look and see if we can make a quick contact or access a DMR repeater if we can't because things are unpredictable with radio you never know if there's somebody there we'll call into the echo test on GB7MR and we'll hear ourselves talking back and we'll know it's working M3 HHY testing echo on GB7MR M3 HHY testing echo on GB7MR M3 HHY testing GB3PZ Okay guys, so hope you enjoyed that video. That was part one. Part two, we're going to look at testing this radio. So we'll do some tests on DMR simplex on the repeater properly and we'll listen to the audio coming out of this thing as well. You got a brief snippet there looking at the echo test, but we'll do some proper testing with this. I'm sure it's going to perform quite well. As I say, the link in the description is where you can buy this radio. The software link is in the description as well, where you can download the software and have a browse through. 
and let me know what you think. I think it's a massive step forward from Bofeng. As I say, you know, I can't really fault it. You know, at this stage, I think for the price as well, it's it's brilliant. Um, I'll say thanks to Radio Odyssey for sending me this radio. Um, and we'll catch you in part two guys if you haven't clicked the like button click the like button if you haven't subscribed make sure you click subscribe and if you have any comments suggestions or feedback or want to let me know what you think of this radio then make sure you do in the box below and i'll get back to you and we'll leave that one there we'll catch you in the next one seven three guys thanks for watching cheers